Hi, my name is Megan Edwards of Focus Communications, and today we're getting an update from Prosper Gold, which trades on the Toronto Venture Stock Exchange under the symbol PGX. Joining me this morning is Prosper Gold's VP Exploration, Rory Ritchie. Rory, thanks for your time today. How are you doing? I'm good, Megan. Yourself? Very good. Now, Rory, before we jump into the latest updates from the company, could you provide us with an introduction to Prosper Gold? Yes, of course. Uh, Prosper Gold, we're, we're a mineral exploration company based in Vancouver, Canada. Uh, we're currently focused on uh, looking for gold in, in safe jurisdictions. And right now, that's uh, Red Lake, Ontario. Uh, we're listed on the TSXV under ticker symbol PGX and on the OTCQB under ticker symbol PGXFF. I will be making some forward-looking statements, most likely, over the course of this presentation, just so people know. A uh, general overview of the company, the team's led by Peter Bernier. Peter Bernier uh, was the founder and CEO of Richfield Ventures, which uh, was taken out by New Gold in 2011 for for uh, over $500 million. And that, that was the, the discovery and, and development of the Blackwater Davidson Gold Project. Uh, our project right now is the Golden Sidewalk, 100% owned, 165 square kilometers in the Bertucci Greenstone Belt. Uh, that's about 60 kilometers east of Red Lake. So Red Lake, Ontario is a, is a world-class gold jurisdiction known for its, uh, known for its high grade. Our share structure remains tight despite uh, the markets over the past 24 months. We're, we're 32 million shares and over 10% is insider ownership management uh, led, by, led largely by Pete Bernier. Upcoming catalyst will be, we'll be kind of drilling uh, relatively soon here at the Skinner North uh, follow up to the initial drilling we did in November of 2022. Uh, and timing right now, gold seems to be uh, having a good week and, and things look pretty good, for, pretty good for gold, especially in Canada. There's a lot of majors looking uh, uh, for gold assets in Canada. So Red Lake District, uh, known as the high grade gold capital of the world. And largely that's, that's the uh, Red Lake Campbell gold mine. Uh, that is now owned and operated by evolution mining so they're shown in kind of the brown color there um and that's over that's over 27 million ounces at an average grade of 21 grams per ton uh past production and reserves so so that's a truly a world-class asset so we're about 60 kilometers east of of the red lake campbell mine we're about 65 kilometers northeast of the dixie project which is now kinross gold uh, was formerly Great Bear Resources, so that in 2022, that was a uh, was big news. A 1.8 billion dollar takeout uh, based on a gold discovery, about 65 kilometers to the southwest of us. There, a uh, quick broad strokes geology. We're on the margin of the Trout Lake Bathalith, so on the on the western side of the Trout Lake Bathalith is the is the Red Lake Gold Mine, or, or close to. It's, that's the, essentially the Red Lake Greenstone Belt. Uh, what I've shown here again, simplified geology. The red lines are major crustal features, big structures. Some of them are unconformities. Some of them are just, are just deformation zones. Uh, and when you narrow in on that area, uh, where we have seen most of the gold uh, to date was within the narrow lake assemblage. So it's a highly prospective package of rocks. Uh, we're, we're seeing gold in numerous areas. Uh, it has that west northwest E2 trend that is known at, in Red Lake there, and that, that plays a big role. In, localizing gold deposits in Red Lake, as do these big structures. So so generally speaking, uh, kind of mirror image of Red Lake and trying to look for, a, you know, a world-class high-grade deposit just like those uh, in Red Lake, Ontario. Now, the company has been focused on the Skinner North target area where a drilling campaign was recently completed in fall of 2022. Can you discuss this target area in a bit more detail and perhaps why this area is the main focus for Prosper? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Happy to. So the, the Skinner target or the Skinner North target area uh, lies between the historic uh, past producing Bathurst mine in, in the northeast corner there. That's where all those blue collars, that's historical drilling. And to the south, the Golden Corridor, that was a that was a uh, exploration concept developed internally by Prosper, as is the Skinner North. And, the, and these were supported by tills, uh, which are shown in the in the inverted triangles there. So. So the Golden Corridor is where Prosper Gold focused its efforts in 2021 and, and the early part of 2022. And we hit a bunch of gold uh, following up on those till anomalies over a big area, but there's, there's certainly more work to do there. Uh, but but right now we're focused on the Skinner uh, for a number of reasons. There's a, you know, it, again, it was an exploration concept affirmed by, by till geochemistry, uh, but it's very much underexplored, uh, mostly because it's covered by uh, two to 10 meters of sand. 
but despite that, we were able to get some good till anomalies there. So, so the Skinner is our focus right now um, because of the what you know the recent revelations in, in till sampling and channel sampling and, and initial drilling, and uh, and also it's just a great place to to explore. Uh, you know, if you can find a deposit there, very easy to build a mine. Uh, so what we did after the tills and, and some geophysics, we did some trenching in 2022 in the in the summer of 2022. We got um, some channel sample results up to 9.7 grams over three meters. So we did get some high grade high grade channel sample results, and then we went up for initial drill testing in in 2022 about November. And we hit broad zones of mineralization. So we did hit gold. We hit a ton of alteration uh, and, and a lot of. Uh, you know, sulfide mineralization um, and, and certainly a lot of structure. Uh, you know, maybe we didn't get the high grade results we were hoping for based on what we saw in the channel sampling, but, but based on the trenching and channel sampling, we do know high grade exists uh, just like in any Red Lake style deposit. You know, these high grade shoots are often uh, tighter. But for, for us, the main things where we saw a ton of structure, um, we saw a lot of sulfide, a lot of alteration, you know, silica anchorite alteration, similar or basically the same as what you see in, in the Red Lake side of things. Uh, so, so really it's just, you know, this was 1250 meters of drilling kind of just gave us an idea of what we're looking at, but now, but now I think we're better equipped to go follow up. Perfect. Now fast forward to this week where Prosper announced results from an IP survey at the target area. Could you run us through the results from the survey and the company's interpretation of the data? Certainly. Okay, so we did an IP survey. Well, we just wrapped it up a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so, you know, winter months are really an ideal time to cost effectively do these kind of ground based uh, surveys. And, and the results are highly, highly compelling. Uh, so what we're hoping to see before we initiated the survey was a is there a large footprint? You know, is this sulfide disseminated sulfide mineralization that we drilled in, in the first phase? Is it going to show up over a bigger area? And and to speak to that, I would point to this this map or image in the lower right corner. So so that those pink or hot colors that that is sulfide, you know, disseminated sulfide. Um, based on what we're drilling, anyways, uh, you know, we, it could be magnetite, but it doesn't really align with the, with the magnetics. So so to us, it's it is indicating some kind of a footprint to a hydrothermal system. And it's fairly large. It's, you know, a kilometer and a half by a kilometer and a half. So lots to explore there based on, on the chargeability telling you where your sulfide is. And, and then importantly, the IP resistivity, um, which is showing you resistive rock types uh, or, 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 you know, areas that have been, uh, that have succumbed to hydrothermal alteration uh, or, or different kinds of alteration. Um, you know, I could, I could point to this dash white line. So that, that is the margin of the Trout Lake Batholith. And again, that's a huge, huge, uh, intrusive, uh, complex, you know, 50 kilometers across. Um, but on the margin of these big batholiths, you get, uh, what's known as horn felsing. So that's essentially a baking of the country rock as that hot intrusion, uh, gets in place. And, and what that does is it, is it makes that, uh, rock more brittle. And, and that's important when you're looking for gold systems because, you know, we found to date at the Skinner a bunch of mineralized shear zones with a ton of alteration, but we haven't necessarily seen well-developed vein systems. And, and you need that more brittle rock to, to crack open and form these veins. So, so we think based on the results and, and, and the initial concept that, that we had, if we can step along these structures moving towards that contact where, where you have some of that more competent host rock, uh, we have a good chance of, of hitting some high grade. And what about next steps? Uh, you've had some previous drilling success at Skinner North. Will the company be following this up with the second phase on the back end of these IP results? Yes. So I think I've alluded to that already. We're, we're going to chase those structures to the uh, to to the west west northwest uh, towards that contact, and and this will be with the second phase of drilling that we'd like to get underway. Uh, you know, really as as, as quickly as possible. Um, and, and then there's a, but there's also a bunch of other targets we've identified, you know, for example, a kilometer to the east, there's a chargeability resistivity feature that lines up with a known, with a known fault that's never been tested. And again, it's undercover. Um, so, so this IP has come up with a whole bunch of targets right out of the gate. Uh, at least for me, I, I, I'm quite excited to see what happens as, as we step along these mineralized structures to, to the, towards that contact. And, and hopefully we start seeing some big veins and, 
and just like most orogenic gold systems, once once you got you get your quartz carbonate veins and, and they get big and you get breaches and things, that's that's where the high grade comes along. So, so long story short, yes, we plan to follow up on some high priority targets uh, in the near future with drilling. And Rory, any final thoughts you'd like to leave investors with from Prosper and your Golden Sidewalk project? Yeah, sure. I mean, um, Prosper Gold has a great care structure. Our management is behind this. We put our dollars in the ground. Uh, we have skin in the game. And again, Pete Bernier owns roughly 10% of the stock and has participated in every in every financing to date. Um, you know, we, we feel we're undervalued. Our market cap has whittled down to kind of six, six or seven million bucks. Um, and we do have some good shareholders behind us. Uh, but as far as near term catalysts, I think that's what everyone wants to hear about. And um, we have we've never been so well equipped, at least in the Skinner target area, to go in and target these things. Now, what, given what we've learned in the first in the first phase of drilling and, and now what we have with the IP, things look really promising. So so I would say stay tuned because, uh, you know, if you can hit a high grade hole in Red Lake, all of a sudden, um, uh, you know, you get a lot of eyes on. This is a fantastic jurisdiction. So, and we do feel we're on to some. All right, great. Thank you so much for your time today, Rory. We look forward to having you back on again soon for another update from Prosper. Sounds good. Thanks, Megan. Appreciate it.